Hey there, American literature scholars. Walter Bound here uh, talking about Thoreau. Uh, it's getting me really thirsty, so I'm opening up a seltzer uh, can from uh, Wegmans. It's very nice. It's zero, zero calories, no sugar. Um, but I don't think Thoreau would be very happy with me drinking this. Um, he says water is the best, best thing. Um, it would be cheaper if I just filled up my water bottle with some filtered water, which I do all day. Uh, this is waste. I'm going to have to throw this out, even though I'll recycle this can. It's still waste, right? And I'm still spending $2.99 for 12 If I just relied on water and maybe just grew my own lemons, I could have like you know, just whatever water costs, which isn't that much. So, but at the same time, this is still better than drinking uh, a $7, $8 sugar concoction from Starbucks, right? And so it's the kind of stuff when you read Thoreau, it's almost like, okay, what can I simplify? What can I get rid of that it will make me uh, better? Uh, I might be able to retire. I might not be able to have to work as much as I do, work 80 hours to walk around a house. I don't, I don't even have enough time to enjoy. So I opened us with an anecdote as I, I enjoy this uh, blackberry tangerine. Um, as an example of economy, he spends you know, 70 pages in economy, which, you know, for an opening chapter, I mean, it's a lot to get through. And he talks, of course, about the necessities of life, gives some context, some background. And most kids get through maybe like a paragraph or two from, again, those stupid uh, American literature textbooks that teachers give you. Uh, my suggestion is, okay, do a deep dive uh, of Thoreau read economy see what he has to say because it just might change your life right now this is an overview of economy uh, in another lecture i'll go over specific quotes and specific things that he's doing rhetorically what makes economy so amazing and so funny because he's so extravagant he says like crazy things just to provoke us um he wants us to move he wants us to say okay i'm doing this tongue-in-cheek but am i really and there's lots of humor here and a wordplay, lots of wordplay in Thoreau. And the guy, of course the guy is smart as anything, right? Think about it, this is before Google and how much he read. You know, he read so much, he was uh, tutored in German, graduated from Harvard, you know, lots of expectations. He was the first Thoreau to go to college. He's basically a working class kind of guy. Uh, he's our first naturalist, really, self-taught. Uh, for a guy who's a self-taught naturalist, you can't go through all himself without thinking, God, he is he is like Mr. Ecology. And so we'll get we'll get to that later. But when we talk about economy and simplicity, 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 instead of applying to 30 colleges, apply to four colleges. Instead of having a 10 bedroom house, have a one bedroom house. Instead of eating three meals a day, eat two meals a day. Think about how this might help us especially when we're dealing with stress and anxiety, especially amongst young people, and we expect them to do seven, eight, nine activities, right, for your resume. Not necessarily because you love it, because you want to look good for colleges. Wow, that seems so ridiculous on so many levels, or take all these hard classes that you may not actually like, like AP Chem, I would go crazy in that class, right? I could maybe do well in it if I sacrificed all the things I love to do, especially as a youth, but I, it's like Huck Finn. It's like the fish are biting, and I'd rather be doing things I want to do with my life rather than what's expected of me to do or what my parents expect of me or what my peers expect of me, right? Uh, a little uh, background here. When my wife and I were, my wife was pregnant and we we're living in an apartment and we, needed, we wanted a house. And of course, we were offered much more money than what we wanted. Says, so, oh, you can afford double the house. Well, of course, the real estate agent wanted us to buy a house for two hundred, not a hundred, because she gets a bigger commission. So we said, no, these homes are a little too pricey. We want something that we can afford on one income, because I had a job. Mary Jane was pregnant. 
and she wanted the option, or life's about choices, right? To stay home with the kids or work a day or two and spend time doing what she actually wanted to do. But if we bought that house for $200,000, there's no way at the current salary I was making that I could afford it with everything else that you have to pay for with children and diapers and all that stuff. It's crazy, right? So we were able to, on my teacher's salary, as a, a new teacher, fortunately I didn't have any student loans at the time. Um, this was a very different age. And we were able to live comfortably in a three bedroom house, two and a half baths, right? Um, and then we were able to sell that house for like 180,000. And uh, so we profited, uh, but we didn't have that big of a house. And uh, compared to my daughter's friends who had gargantuan kind of McMansion homes. And, but I'm like, we live better than Kings than anywhere else in the world. That we have running water, we have safety, we have warmth, we have family, you have your own bedroom, you don't have to share a bathroom with your mom and dad. Think about how fortunate that is. But of course, everything's by comparison. But what that enabled us to do was to spend time with family, to, for me to write, for my wife to go back to school and pursue fashion. So the decisions we make with economy, right, and simplification, it's not just, they're not just words on a paper, right? So when we read economy and you decide to go to a school that's $80,000 a year versus going to a state school or commuting to a state school, that might cost you 10,000, or if you're really smart, you might get there free because they want you so bad. I'm like, think about it. You're getting an education, right? If you can get to Chicago in a Honda Civic, why buy a Lexus? Oh, because you'll look better? Okay, is it all about appearances then? So Thoreau teaches us that simplification is not just, you know, oh, you have to uh, become Yoda and give up everything and live in a swamp hut. No, it's not about that, right? That's the extreme. We're not gonna be Jesus, like I said in another lecture, going into the wilderness for 40 days or having to have a, you know, be a monk and go on a mountain and renounce the world and live simply and have a, uh, an oath of poverty, right? We don't have to do that, right? I can still enjoy a seltzer. I can still enjoy a beer, but, you know, let me have one beer. 10 beers is excessive. Let me have a house but something that I can afford. Let me have an education, but something that I can afford, right? And so buyer's remorse is always the case. It's easy to buy on credit, right? But when that bill comes in and you can't pay it, or now you have to pay the interest, that's of course problematic and people get in trouble and then want the government or something to bail you out. Which of course, if you read Self-Reliance, no, don't do any of that nonsense. It's you who have the power to make your life the miracle it can be rather than complaining and just saying oh it's about luck oh you're just lucky or you know God's God's looking after you no it's you you have that power um, many of us have many obstacles whether it's our, our gender our ethnicity the zip code that we live in that you don't have good schools because you don't live in the good zip code to pay for the high taxes in New Jersey so throws economy talks about a lot of things right and I once had this conversation not too long ago about a student who needed a job I said why did you need why do you need a job I need to make money why do you need to make money to have a car why do you need a car to get to my job okay what else do you need money for gas for my car insurance for my car and then I said sarcastically like well why if you just give up the car you won't need a job right and he, and he looked at me like, wow, because it's almost like the ancient symbol of the snake devouring its own tail. It's okay, work, but what are you working toward? You know, how about find a place where you can walk to and then bank that money, set up a 529 fund, invest in a Vanguard mutual fund, right? Or use that money to take your girlfriend out, right? Or help pay for college, right? Uh, or instead of buying that expensive uh, Frappuccino, make your own coffee right? It's the idea of simplification. You don't need the things and the things, it's like Atlas carrying the world on your shoulders. And if you just give up the world, because what, what is he getting? Atlas, what is he getting for his, his toil and his labor, right? I don't, I, what does he get? He's just straining under the weight. 
The idea is to let go of the weight, just let go, and you'll be free, you'll be easy. An example I have too is when I was traveling, um, and of course I relate to this so well because the lessons I've learned from Thoreau has, has really, really helped me. And I think my family, my daughters, uh, uh, in making decisions that have led to personal success. And I remember this one time, uh, backpacking, just with my backpack, I had no key. I had a couple jeans, a couple, uh, a couple shirts, a sweatshirt because I was going up to the Pacific, and I had a tra I had a, um, a rail pass going up on the uh, Coast Starlight Express on Amtrak. Um, this is back in 1995, no, 93, it was 1993. And I stayed in hostels, I didn't have much money, and it was amazing how cheaply I was able to travel and how free I felt. I, like I have no responsibilities right now. I have a backpack, I'm meeting lots of people, and of course the road would say, well, why are you on a train? You know, like we don't ride on the railroad, the railroad rides on us, and why do you need to go to Seattle? And of course I understand that. But he's, he's talking about the inner world, right? And he's talking about knowing oneself. And you don't need to go to Seattle. You don't need to go to Vancouver. You don't need to go to San Francisco to find yourself. You're just like a turtle and you're carrying your baggage with you to new places. So I understand that. At the same time, I also understand about being able to be free and easy, about having the time and the luxury to travel for two weeks on like not much at all and to experience the world and in a way, that trip was sort of like my desert. It's like, okay, I, I, in between uh, undergraduate and graduate school, I really don't think I want to do public school teaching because that's crazy, and I still think it's crazy for anyone who goes into public school teaching, another lecture, uh, another time. It's wonderful, but lots of, lots of, lots of challenges. Don't get me started. Why don't you get me started? Anyway, um, but that liberty, right? But we have so much stuff. I think of that George Carlin uh, comedy routine about a place for your stuff, that you have all the stuff, the stuff, the stuff, and it weighs you down. Thoreau says, simplify. Instead of like all the hundreds of fares, what you can count on two hands, maybe even one hand, and you'll see your life appear and it'll be clearer than it is when you have so much on your plate to deal and you're stressed out, you're anxious. And if we're so happy with all the stuff and the material excess that we have in this country and all the clothes that we have and the cars and the, and the technology and the phones and the recording equipment and my lights and all this stuff, right? How come the suicide rates are so high? How come depression is so high? How come uh, binge drinking and vaping and drug overdose why? If all this stuff is making us happy, and it's not, right, how come we're not just all very happy and because these things are not what makes us happy? We need to go inside. We need to make connections with people. And most importantly, we need to find our own consciousness. We need to be comfortable in our own skin, like the person we see, and then be able to draw forth the powers that you have and find the powers that we have. When we're so busy, we don't understand, we don't trust our instincts. We don't trust our tuition, our intuition, to find out what makes me happy. What makes me happy? Walter Van, doing this video, getting paid to do this video, having 30 kids every class, uh, okay, it's a little much, but you know, 25, 26 kids every class, lots of fun, I love public speaking. Of course, talking about literature, I mean, it's like crazy. It's like, I can't believe I'm getting paid to talk about the great works of art, of American literature, and connecting with kids and inspiring them and getting them to be better writers and better readers and being able to take on the man, creating leaders, because that's what the liberal arts is supposed to do, create leaders, right? You read this stuff, you read about Grant, you read about Whitman, you read about all this great stuff and you do all this public speaking in order for you to be a leader, in order for you to not buy what people are selling or to be able to criticize what people are selling. All right, so this is my little intro to economy. It's long, it's worth it, and um, hopefully I'll have a backup to show you uh, a variety of quotes, that some that are popular, of course, uh, and some that just resonate with me uh, for various reasons. Right? Thank you for listening. Ho hopefully you'll uh, come back for uh, where I live, what I live for, and 
maybe we'll keep going through this and get into reading and solitude and sounds and ponds in winter. Lots of things that I've rediscovered that I lost. And I'm like, oh my goodness, Henry David Thoreau is a modern, is kind of like a 19th century James Joyce in his consciousness, in his stream of consciousness, in his verbal wordplay and the fun he's having with language. He's 1850, 1848, 1850, and you know, the whole mid-century, but he is so ahead of his time. Um, and that's one of the things that makes him so modern um, to, to readers. Thank you so much.